Hey guys, what's up? It's 8-Bit Eric. Today we have another review. Today's game is going to be a spiritual successor to games such as Maniac Mansion, Day of the Tentacle, Monkey Island, you know, those classic point-and-click adventure games that we saw in the 80s and 90s that I personally enjoyed and had a lot of fond memories of. You know, those what the heck do I do next, let's just click everywhere on the screen type of games. Yes, Thimbleweed Park is on the Nintendo Switch. This had been on other platforms such as PlayStation 4 not too long ago, came out you know, back in March. It is now on the Nintendo Switch. When I first saw it, I was like, wow, I gotta play that. And it's finally out, so let's go ahead. I'm gonna begin this review and let's see how uh, Thimbleweed Park point and clicks as far as my uh, recommendation for it. All right, so Thimbleweed Park, like I said, it is a callback to all those classic PC games. Point and click games were some of the most fond memories I've had. There was a King's Quest that was like point and click on the Sega Master System that I grew up playing with. And this game reminded me a lot of games like that. And, and matter of fact, it looks like it's Maniac Mansion, straight from the graphics or anything. And that's because two of the guys that actually worked at LucasArts made this game. So these are former ex-employees, ex-geniuses, creative gurus when it comes to these type of games. So you know that is going to be good. Now as I mentioned, this was previously on other consoles and platforms. Now it's on the Switch. It's a tablet device, a hybrid portable, you know, take it, pick it up and play it anywhere. So I think point and click adventures are the future as far as a type of genre that will stick it out on the Nintendo Switch because you don't really see this game too much. Like I said, there's a handful here or there once in a while, but I think with Thimbleweed Park coming out, maybe we can see a new influx of them. That's hopeful thinking for me. Now, the game has that retro aesthetic that all these point and click games. As a matter of fact, if it wasn't for the high definition, like shading and parallax scrolling and all that, you would seriously think that you're playing an old school game. It feels nitty gritty. The color palettes, the way that the characters look, lots of big sprites and pixels in this game. Just very fun to look at. I really enjoyed it. Right from the beginning of the game, when you see the premise, which is a mystery murder happens and there's two agents that come to the scene they have to solve who did the murder and you're in this creepy town thimbleweed park where everything is just awkward all the characters all the npcs you meet just kooky it's a lot like maniac mansion in that regard when you run into npcs that are dressed up like pigeons or you see npcs that are just awkward you know like for example the coroner and the sheriff look exactly alike in this game but the only difference from them is one of them ends their sentence with a reno so like federino and the other one ends it with a who like feder who so it's kind of funny even though you kind of know that it's the same guy and this game does break the fourth wall a lot so it's kind of like a parody of what it's spiritually success in to be quite honest it's a lot of fourth wall breaking the game will remind you that it's a game that's paying tribute and kind of having fun with the type of game that it really is. So it's very enjoyable. About 15 minutes in, I was already hooked to this game. Couldn't even stop staring. Oh baby, I wanna get with ya and take your picture. My homeboy's trying to warn me, but that butt you got has me so... Wait, was that really on my script for this video? Anyway, so Thimbleweed Park, point and click classic interface. As you see, you have the big screen, you got the sprite, and then you have a little section where you're able to choose your, I guess, verbs, so, such as look at, push, pull, talk to, use, things like that. You interact with stuff on the screen. Thankfully, this game does have two options for people that are noobs, because I know a lot of people might not have played old school point and click games. You could do casual mode, which actually has 
a fair amount of hand holding and not to mention it has a tutorial that teaches you the basics of playing the game it has a notebook for each character that kind of gives you a itinerary for what you're supposed to do to get to the next act and it also allows you to use a hint line you're able to use any phone and dial hint for a hint as many hints i think like three for you to get to the next thing so there is a lot of hand holding with casual mode I don't want people to hold this game's difficulty to against it. Like, I don't want people to be like, oh man, just point and click and this and that. This is what gaming was like back in the day. Now, if you are a hardcore adventurer and you want to solve puzzles by yourself, hard mode, which is actually the way that this game is meant to be, does not screw around. In fact, it adds additional puzzles that you have to solve in order to complete this game. Which, that is actually what a lot of point-and-click adventure games are. It's puzzle solving. You gotta figure out how to get past certain spots. If the road is blocked because water is just bursting everywhere, you gotta figure out what items you need to do in order to help the NPCs fix it. Or if you find a random item, you gotta figure out who needs it. If you find, you know, a camera that you gotta block in order to make a phone call so the surveillance camera doesn't see you or things like that. There's a lot of puzzles on here some of them might not be as obvious with the answers on how to solve them and some of them might be like oh why didn't i think of that the answer was in my face you will get a lot of that and you will spend a lot of time walking around trying to figure out where to go next if you're not playing casual mode so i hope people don't hold the steep curve from casual to hard because there's no in between there's no normal casual to hard so hope people don't hold that against the game because i particularly enjoyed it and i played a little bit of both me i like casual mode because i forget stuff i don't like to have to go to npcs and have to memorize and talk a little bit more and stuff like that but speaking of talking to npcs the dialogue in this game is cheesy good the voice acting totally cheesy depending on the character could be exactly what it's like now the main two investigators are obviously a tribute to Mulder and scully from x files but you also have a few other characters that join the fray that really make it like, you know, Maniac Mansion in its uh, regard. But these are actually pretty cool little characters. You can play as a ghost, which I'm not going to really get into the story as far as beyond that there's a murder that happens. But there's a ghost character that you end up playing as that could go through walls and actually like zap electronics and spook people. There's a girl that's a video game programmer, which she holds another part in the story and there's a clown and this clown is like an insulting crusty the clown type of clown you could go around insulting people and <laughs> yeah so each character does have a little intertwined story some of them might not be as direct or whatever it does take a little time to find the other characters you got to actually play flashbacks that kind of give you a backstory of each character and then they meet up and interact and you can use them to solve puzzles hard mode of course you're going to have puzzles that actually take more than one character to solve because that's just how point and click adventures are there are a few areas in the game to explore once you get a map through uh point and click means you got a circus that's pretty creepy you got a thimbleweed park which is actually pretty creepy in its own regard uh and you got like the mysterious sheriff and stuff like that so the presentation the atmosphere the mysteriousness is mm, it hit the nail on the head now unlike a lot of older point and click games this game is actually pretty open-ended you can actually end up going to areas that you don't have access to way ahead of time or you can accidentally solve a puzzle way ahead of time and kind of go out of order my first playthrough i kind of got a little confused because i reached characters before i was supposed to do something else so it's a little open-ended and it might actually confuse you if you're not playing in casual mode the game is divided up into five acts with their own little stories and stuff and when you complete certain goals or interact with certain npcs and solve certain puzzles it will progress the story towards the end of the game pretty simple right now the interface as i said self-explanatory if you've played a point and click game it works pretty well on the nintendo switch you can just move the analog stick to where you need to go and click on screen or you could even use the d-pad and the l and r buttons to kind of shift 
to each thing and L and R buttons can actually help you find certain things on the screen that you can interact with and then you push up on the d-pad and it'll go down to the bottom and you select your verb so it's very simple and easy to pick up the tutorial is plenty good enough to teach you how to play this game so yeah performance wise looks good plays good sounds good it's good and of course with any switch game portability is fantastic it's awesome it's just you know take it out play the game and enjoy it if you're on a road trip point and click little adventure games like this perfect but the one selling point that i would like to tell you guys is even though this may be on other platforms and stuff this is the definitive version of the game for the simple fact that not only can you play it at home or on the go but that the touchpad is supported that is awesome when it comes to a point and click game because you figured back in the day you played on your pc with your mouse and the keyboard well now you can play with your fingers that actually works pretty well and it doesn't do too bad i actually rather enjoyed using my fingers to play with this game make sure when you're done eating your chicken nuggets and stuff that you wash your hands but it works pretty good it's intuitive and i think that is a plus for this version of the nintendo switch Thimbleweed Park is a callback to the classic genre of games that I feel has been underrated yet loved throughout the years. If I could say anything, I would say that I would highly recommend buying Thimbleweed Park. Now, the replayability might be short-lived when you play it through casual. You might want to try it hard and then there's no ex extra options, no extra modes. So you probably only do two different playthroughs of it. I personally enjoyed it my initial playthrough of the game had a lot of fun spent quite a few hours playing it and i thought it was pretty good i think this is a game that is quite worth showing support for on the nintendo switch for the simple fact that i think there might be a little bit of encouragement for more point and click title games to come out it has the perfect interface for it your freaking fingers this console is made for point and click games. So with that regard, I could definitely recommend the Nintendo Switch version for you guys to check out. And while well, guys, that's gonna be it for today's review. If you have not subbed the channel, if you're new for some reason, or if you unsubscribed, don't forget to click that sub button. It really helps me out I'm trying to get to 50K subs. And don't forget to leave a like and comment down below. Thanks a lot for watching guys. I'll see you next time. Peace out.